In our previous videos, we talked about what views are. We created a very basic URL structure for our portfolio website. In this video, I'll talk about templates and templates is a very important concept in Django. So you need to listen to this lecture very, very carefully and I'll try to make it as friendly as possible. So to start with what I'll do is I'll open my Django tutorial for beginners playlist and I want you to access this playlist as soon as possible because this is the place where I'll uploading all the videos so you should be uh, accessing the playlist if you haven't already done that and you can bookmark it and you can save it by the time you see this playlist you'll see a whole lot of videos uh, already uploaded inside this playlist so what I'll do now is I'll say python manage.py run server okay and this is a command that you can memorize because if you are working with Django and if you want to be a Django developer this is the command that you'll be firing all the time. So what I'll do is I'll control click this and you can see that this is my home page. And if I go to about, this is my about. If I go to say contact, I think I made a contact endpoint as well. I'll go to my contact endpoint and you can create as many endpoints as possible. For this project, I've created only four endpoints. If I'm not wrong, let me check it. I've created four endpoints inside my homes urls.py. And the best part about Visual Studio Code is that you can see home written here. So you know that this urls.py is coming from my home folder. And I'll not be, get confused with the urls.py inside my portfolio folder. So this is one of the best parts that I like a lot about Visual Studio Code. And that's why I've chosen it as a source code editor. Another part that I like about Visual Studio Code is that I can directly uh, edit HTML templates there and I don't have to, you know, use any other editor to edit the templates. So it includes IntelliSense, which is the suggestion of all the HTML tags. It includes Emmet, which is, I'll show you what Emmet is when we create our HTML template. As you can see that I have this home and I have this portfolio folder. Now portfolio is the name of our project. And if I open this portfolio and settings.py inside portfolio, this contains all the project configuration. Okay. I can uh, edit all these variables called secret key, debug, allowed host, stall apps, and all these bunch of things. But at this point, I'm interested in app DIRs. Okay. You can see that there is something called templates here, and there is something called backend DIRs, app DIRs. There are a lot of things inside the settings.py and you don't have to understand all these things in the very beginning. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll tell you about DIRs. So as we already talked about Django, it is, it follows MVT pattern. Okay. So once we have this views.py, we return HTTP response, but this is not a website. So if I go to source code of this website, view page source, you'll see, you'll say, what is this? This is not even valid HTML. You want to put some valid HTML in there. And this by no means is a valid HTML file. So what I'll do is I want this content to be coming from an HTML file. And for that, what I'll do is I'll return a template. What do I mean by returning a template? I have two options. I can either write my entire HTML like this HTML head, but just think about it. If I do, if I write all this HTML, I'll show you some website. Give me a moment. Google.com and view page source. View page source. Do you expect me to write all this inside this without any automatic suggestions or emit? Ideally, we can do that. It's possible to do that, but that might not be the best way to develop Django website. What I'll do is I will render a template and what I'll do is I'll comment this out and I'll rather include return render. Now render is a function that is by default imported in our views.py if you have noticed it there from django.shortcuts import render and inside render the first argument is a request. Now you might get confused why request here and why request here but for now just bear with me write request here and here as well in all the views. Okay. The next argument is the name of the template. What I'll do is I'll say the name of my template is say home.html. Where is this home.html? We didn't see this home.html. And if I try to even open my website at this point, I'll see the error and the error will clearly say that where is home.html? You, you're talking about home.html. Where is it? I don't find any home.html. So I'm very sorry. I, I need to show this error to you. 
what you want to do is you want to go to your settings.py, find this dirs and add a folder templates. Just add a folder. You can add folder with any name. Believe me, it can be anything. I have named it templates because I think this is what it is. So I've, I've called it templates and I want to call it templates. You can call it whatever you want, but it's a good idea to call it templates. So let's stick to that. After I make a templates folder here, what I'll do is I'll create home.html and I'll use Emmet. If you put an exclamation mark and enter, it'll give you this boilerplate. And what I'll do is I'll write home and I'll say this is my home with HTML. And I have messed things up here. This is my home with HTML. And if I reload this at this point, I'll find that I have this is my home with HTML. But there is something interesting happening here. If I refresh this source page, you'll find that there is HTML inside here. I am actually refreshing the contact source. What I'll do is I'll go to view page source and you can see clearly that I have some HTML inside my page. This is the ideal way to do this. Now I can change my home.html and I'll see that everything is being reflected here. This is the best way to do this. And I can keep on changing this home.html, about.html, contact.html, everything.html, whatever pages I have. And I can simply come here and I can change and edit these templates and I can see the change reflected in my page. So this sounds really very good. So what I'll do at this point is I'll comment all of these HTTP response lines out and I'll copy this one and I'll say, I don't want to use this HTTP response anymore, but rather what I'll do is I'll use this render. And instead of rendering home.html at all four places, what I'll do is I'll render about.html projects.html and contact.html. So what I've done is I've saved this file and I need to have all these templates inside my templates directory. So I already have home.html. I'll create my about.html and I'll use Emmet. I'll say about, I'll, I'll, I'll be typing really, very fast at this point because I don't want to waste your time. I'll say this is about. I don't want to spend a lot of time in something which is not very concept driven. So contact.html and what was the another one projects.html. So projects.html. So I have these four files. I'll quickly use Emmet. I'll say this is my projects.html. And I'll say, this is my about, I already said that I'll use Emmet. I'll say, this is my contact, contact.html projects about contact home. We are all good. I'll reload this page. I'll go to about now, about, 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 this is about contact. This is my contact. Oops, I, I pulled this window out accidentally anyways. So contact here and then projects. So all the HTML pages are working very fine. And if you check view page source by right clicking, you'll find that it now contains HTML. So what I can do now is I can simply type some gibberish and I see page not found. If I say about slash gibberish, once again, it's telling me that this URL pattern is not matching with anything. So you got to type something which exists. So if I say about, I find this, this is about this HTML template looks good, but not as good as I want it to look like. So what I'll do in the next video, I'll tell you what bootstrap framework is. We'll come back to these templates and we'll customize these templates based on our needs. But before that, I want you to understand one more concept. So let me close all these templates. And let me close all these URLs.py as well, or I'll park them aside. Now, as you can see, views.py has this render request home.html. What if I want to pass some variable to home.html? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. So what I'll do is I'll pass a context to home.html and a context is name Harry and I'll say course 
Django. Okay. So this is the context and this is simply a Python dictionary. I don't think you'll have any problem with this context is simply a Python dictionary, nothing more than that. What I'll do is I'll pass this Python dictionary to my render as a third argument. I'll save this. Once I save this, I can use name and course as variables here. Now Django has something called Django template language DTL. So I'll write here DTL can render variables from views. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll wrap this up inside a heading and I'll say this is a video from and I'll put these curly braces and what I'll do is I'll type uh, what was that? Let me see. It was name. I'll say, okay, name. And once again, what I'll do is I'll say, this is a video from name and he will teach you. I'll say, and let me put this here and I'll say P enter. He will be teaching you. And once again, I'll put this double curly braces and what I'll do is I'll type course here. So I'm typing the keys of this context dictionary. Now, if I open my website, you'll see that I have, this is a video from Harry and he will be teaching you Django. Where is this Harry coming from? This is coming from this dictionary. I want you to pause for a moment and see how this is working. I have passed a Python dictionary to home.html. And once I pass this Python dictionary to home.html, this Python dictionary can be used like this here. So inside double curly braces, I can use the keys of this dictionary and I'll find the corresponding value rendered inside my template. Okay. So this is how it works. We can even use for loops inside our template. We can even use uh, if conditions inside our template. There are a lot more things to this, but this is the simplest way to render a variable inside our template. So I want you to pause for a moment, look into this and maybe pass another context dictionary. If I change my context dictionary to something like this, say name Pawan and course Python. If I reload this, you can say he, this is a video from Pawan. He will be teaching you Python. Now I might as well change this he to name once again. So it will look something like Pawan will be teaching you Python. So this is a video from Pawan. Pawan will be teaching you Python. So this is how this works. You can pass a context to your templates and your uh, context will be rendered as you want inside your templates. So I can put a double curly brackets. Uh, it's actually braces, so double curly braces and I can type the name of the variable inside double curly braces and you'll see that it is rendered like this inside your template. So this was about template, but there is more to this concept. So at this point, I want you to pause for a moment and try to create these templates just like I created these. I want you to change the name of this folder and see if it works. So if I change the name of this folder to template one, template two, uh, and change the name of this folder as well, templates one, templates two, whatever the name of my, this folder is, I'll find no problems with my project whatsoever, but it's always a good practice to name your folders and files very meaningfully. If you give your folders and files a meaningful name, you'll understand what's going on. And it's really important for you to do that. So whatever project you are writing, be it a Java project, be it a JavaScript project, be it a Python project, be it a machine learning project, be it a Django project, you need to name your variables very, very meaningfully. So with that said, uh, we'll stop for this video and I want you to understand how these things are working. We'll not be using HTTP response very often in our further videos, but we'll use render. First argument to render is request. Second argument is the name of the template. And third argument is the context. If at all we are passing any context and if we are not passing any context, there will be no third argument. I hope this is really very clear to you. And I expect you to give me a like to this video. If you enjoyed this video and if you're liking this course already, please let me know that you're liking this course, because if you type a comment down below, it really gives me a lot of confidence. If you want me to drop in more videos and add more videos to this playlist, I'll be very happy to see your comment. And if you access this playlist and bookmark this, it'll be very convenient for you to follow my course. With that said, thank you so much guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.